Right, so I'm going to start now by building uh, F Cron, I think it is in Beyond Linux from Scratch. So, let's look for it. There it is there. So you can see that we've got all the requirements. Uh, it says text editor default is fire from the Vim package. Now as you can see Vim has got a link but it's within Beyond Linux from scratch and it can be rebuilt for the graphical environment. You can see it's got some other dependencies there so we could actually do that as well while we're here. Um, so it looks like we've got all the dependencies. Let's just check that lower version because I think there was two versions. Yep, that is the right one. So I'll download this again. It's probably again, it's probably the same as the one as in the Linux from scratch, but um, if you've got plenty of space, it's only 15 megabytes. If you recompile Vim to link against X and your X library is not on the root partition, you'll no longer have another a few similar emergencies, so that's something to bear in mind. Um, obviously this is not the case because the whole file system is on the, on the root, including the boot partition. Um, install Vim by running the following commands. If you intend to run the test and have not yet and not installed X org in user, append LD flags to the configure line below. Okay, so that's quite important because we haven't installed Xorgan user. If you remember, it's in the ops directory. It was down there. So let's put these two changes in first. And copy the configure. And then not to forget to put this in and also check if there's any other options with features it was huge. Okay, so if you don't want the GUI version of Vim, um, that option needs to be specified. And if you don't want to link again against X at all, then use that switch. And then we've got okay. These are to allow. Um, Inter interpreters for each of these languages, so that's what the optional packages are all about. So we can add those in. We've got what we've we got Lua and Ruby there. So Lua, Perl, Python 3, TCL, TCLSH. Yeah, we've got all of these. So it explains why the versions are used as they are there. So let's let's copy the whole of this in. And whether or not you use these, it might be interesting to see that configured and built. So just removing the columns out of the list. They're the com commas, sorry, not columns. And We'll see how that goes. So 
so we'll build it. Okay, I did wonder about that. The config command, it did say to add that LD config at the end. Um, and obviously that does matter its position. So I'm going to have to rebuild this from scratch. So I need to, um, let me just check that that XOR prefix should, should exist. Uh, delete it, go to the end of the command, just reread what it says. Yeah, append it to the configure line below, so just make sure that's copied correctly. I've got the two quotes, so let's try again. So I build it once again, and then I'll run the tests. Okay, so now to run the tests. Okay, it's interesting, it's still failing. Uh, 
It's like it doesn't understand this and it's just looking at the org prefix bit. Um, right, let's start again. So it wasn't the position that made a difference with the looks of it. Should be double quotes. All right, let's see if we can see that reported anywhere there's found Python TCL oh Lua and Perl Oh, there it is there. The prefix not set, okay. Ruby X libraries and headers. So it's found it there. Because Troubles didn't know what it looked like with the previous settings, so I'm not sure if that's any different without running it again. So I will do that. And see how it goes this time. Okay, that's built, so I'm going to run the test again, and let's hope it works this time. And yes, it does seem to be working, so 
The single, single quotes, as I remember, is it means that whatever appears between them is to be taken literally. Um, and the double quotes is to have um, things expanded, such as the environment variables. So I think that's probably what the problem was. Uh, but anyway, it seems to be running OK now. Just see what it happens at the end now. Okay, it's finished. Um, one has failed. Um, it says 53 was skipped. Some tests label as flaky, it says down here. My, my fail occasion can be ignored. The tests are known to fail if the output is redirected to a file. Um, Now there was um, things popping up on the screen, so whether that delay introduced that failure. Um, looks like something to do with the geometry, so that could be something when I was placing the window it failed. Um, I might have resized it by accident something like that might have happened 
so um, I'm not too worried about this uh, just one uh, failure so I'm going to install it and put in the rest of these commands to finish off the install If you wish to update runtime files, files issue the following command to install the runtime files and regenerate the tags as the root user issue. So I'm not sure if these runtime files are similar, doing the similar thing or or um, they're separate, I'm not sure, but I'll run these anyway. And that seems to be done. So some information there about configuring them, which we've kind of already seen. Um, let's try and run the graphical vim. And there's the window, and there it is running. So that seems to be working fine. So I'll tidy that up. And I'll mark that off as chapter 6. And obviously there are other editors. If you prefer different editors to Vim, then of course there's nobody to tell you what to install on your machine. Um, Vim just happens to be my preferred editor anyway, so it's convenient for me to install that. So that's complete. I'm going to move back now to Fcron. download the package and install it. So the first thing is to add it to the syslog the log file and because we've modified that it needs to be, the daemon needs to be reloaded and also a separate group and user for running the cron daemon and now we can extract fcron and start to install it not sure if there be any extra options here but we can check so that's send mail, we've got send mail Or you can use a different MTA to have emails uh, mailed. I don't normally use it, um, but obviously in a different environment, it might be important that you get notifications of jobs that fail or specific things happening. I uh, don't need that. So with editor allows us to set the editor to use so I'm going to add this in I imagine it's going to be under user bin fire and we've got dot book utils so we can add this in Yes, this is for documentation. Put that in there and configure like that. So let's look at this. So it's identified PAM read line. And the rest of it looks good. So let's run make. and install it. 
that's finished. So configuration, let's become root. Um, periodic hierarchy, this is um, probably a good idea to have. Um, and you can see it allows you to specify hourly, daily, weekly, monthly scripts, which are a little bit easier to use than the traditional method of um, specifying specific times. And then we'll install the boot script. And then we can start it as well. So that is FCron complete. So that's chapter 12. Cron, cross that off and shut that down and tidy it up. So what I'm going to do now is to go back through these packages and just add in uh, the configuration. So I'll start with make CA, I think that's the one that's been waiting the longest. And you can see there's just a simple cat command here, so I'll become the root. And all we need to do is to copy this in. And that should be sufficient. So I'll just check, I think I've marked that off as complete, yeah I have. So I'll shut that tab down now. PCI Utils, again similar thing. So that's done. Um, I'll check this one as well. Chapter 12. PCI Utils, yep, I've marked that one off. And we've got USB Utils, again, similar sort of thing. So, as you can see, in the user um, no, sorry, etc cron dot weekly We've installed three scripts to which will run and update those specific packages once a week. So USB utils, just check that one. Right, you yeah, haven't crossed that one off. So I'll cross it off as complete now. Sysstat. Right, this is a bit different too. Begin gathering sysstat history. You must add to or create a privileged user's cron tab. The history data location is file log SA. The user running system uses utilities via Chrome must have right access to this location. Okay, this looks a little bit more involved and I'm not sure what it's used for or what it's about. So rather than uh, mess around with something I'm not too sure about, I'm not going to actually do anything with this. But clearly if you understand these things, it's got some examples there. So I will actually shut this down and not do anything else with it. So I'll mark that off as complete. And that's the FCRON related stuff completed. Uh, that's my single book on a page. So I suppose the next thing to do is just to go start going through some of these dependencies. So, so I'm going to start off with Ghost Script, I think it was. Yeah, because that was waiting for GTK3, which we've now got. So I'm going to do a search for Ghost Script. Okay. 
Not sure why. That's jumping like that. I'll do it from here instead. Open a new tab. I'll just move this over here. I think I could pin this one, couldn't I? Okay, so that's interesting. That link's not a different colour. Yeah, well, I've def definitely downloaded it, so I'm not sure why that hasn't changed. So, dependencies, yeah, we've got all of these, so we can start building it. So we've installed the recommended dependencies so we can run this command. Apply a patch. Remove this Zlib file or directory, probably directory. And let's copy this configure command. And see if there's anything to modify. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything else there. So I'll let that run. And it says the shared library depends on GTK3, but it's only used by external programs like these, which are part of the, well, two of them are part of the text live installation. Um, but Image Magic will probably be installing, so it's definitely worth um, going with this. So that's configured. I'm going to build it now.
Okay, that's in uh, built. So now we can create a shared object file. So that's finished building the shared library. Now we can install the package again or reinstall it. And the shared library. And the documentation. 
Now the fonts probably don't need to worry about that, but what we can do is check to see if those fonts are there. So there they are, so there's probably no point in um, expanding those again. And finally we can test the new installation by running this command and there's a window popped up and there's our picture of the Tiber again. So that's Ghost Script completed reinstall so I've marked that off as complete I'm going to shut down the tab and tidy up